Ew, David. <laughs> yes, for anybody that is a Schitt's Creek fan as myself, Dan Levy is the Bozzy Astrology chart that I am unpacking for you today. So welcome. This is Lydia with the Feng Shui and Bozzy Chinese Astrology channel. And on this channel, I often like to read the charts of famous people because I think it helps us to better understand our own charts and our own lives. So if this speaks to you, please subscribe, like, and follow along so you don't miss a single video. So I've been covering all kinds of things from country music to politics to um, trials, and also it's fun to just deep dive into a fun celebrity like Dan Levy. I think of him as fun. Uh, I think he is actually quite a genius in the whole creativity of creating drama. And what a, a thing that he did with Schitt's Creek. And so this reading, um, stick with it because as we get near the end, I'm going to reveal some really, a very big reveal about Dan Levy and where he is in his life at this now time that just began and how that is going to dictate his way forward with his career. So let's get started. Um, so yeah, Dan Levy is born August 9th, 1983 at 12.13 p.m. And he is from Canada. We know that. Um, his year is a yin water pig. His month is a yang metal monkey. His day is a yin earth snake. And his hour is yang metal horse. Each of your four pillars reveals different aspects of your life and personality. When we look at the hour, which is something I do pretty heavily on the channel because it's where people's careers are, and it's also your children and your younger siblings. When we look at um, your day, that is you. You're, the day you were born is the biggest part of the entire Bozzy chart. Everything emanates from the element sitting there on top of the animal. So this is yin earth is what we're looking at with Dan. And sitting on top of the snake, which is yang fire. We then look at the month, which is his parents and older siblings, which he does not have, and the year, which is your elders. Okay, so um, here we've got someone, also his life pillar, which is a secret hidden part of your chart. This reveals why you're here. Why are you living this life? And this is also something that is very shocking because of why it's con it is connected to his now time of his life. And I'm going to get to that a little later. So when we're looking at your year, I think of it like the umbrella. And under that umbrella trickles down qualities of that zodiac animal into your personality, but always coming back to your day being you. Now, that being said, I even recently did a reading with someone. And as I'm even talking to this woman, I'm thinking she doesn't resonate very much with her day animal. She is very much her year animal. And the reason is that sometimes the year animal echoes a lot of the other aspects of the chart so that it pulls the focus away from the self to more of your year zodiac animal. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I also see people that have very much blended the two, like myself. Someone born in a, in a fire horse um, year and a water ox day, I am all of those qualities of the horse and the ox. I, for whatever reason in my life, I have pulled all of those qualities and blended them almost equally. 
So each chart is very unique. And that being said, if you're curious about your own chart, the relationships that you have, your health, why you're struggling with whatever, go into the description. I've got links for you to order your Bosi Astrology. Happy to do that with you. And I would love to sit with you on Zoom and get to meet you. Okay. So Dan is someone who loves to have his ducks in a row. He's an organized guy and his family is there for him. And you feel that. He is definitely in, entrenched in the Levy family for sure. And with Schitt's Creek, they're all there, right? Um, except for mom. Not so sure about mom. Not a whole lot that I know about her. But anyway, um, and this is someone who, um, Dan is somebody that can be stubborn and he can have his own fixed mind as much as he has movement. There is a structure in that, in his personality that can get a little stuck and a little, ah, eh, I don't want to move out of this thought that I have or opinion that I have or belief system that I have. Um, he has an incredible work ethic, very trustworthy and honest. Um, and he achieves success through his diligence and through that work ethic. Um, the other thing uh, about him is that he really needs his life to be all the ducks in a row. He needs things to be ordered because when life is out of balance, his panties are in a bunch and he's not a happy camper. And that's not a good thing for any of us. Um, partnerships are tricky for him, but when he really puts his all into it, he makes it work. And we see this also with the fact that he is innately a leader. He is a leader and someone that sees the big picture and can put it all together. In fact, I think that Dan Levy, even though he's a great actor, I think that his real role is behind the camera as a writer, as a producer, as a director. And one of the reasons I say that is because of his five elements. Um, but let me finish up with his personality first. So he also has, um, he can come off as aloof and self-centered kind of in his world. And a lot of that is his creativity and where he kind of, you know, like any of us, when you're in your work, you're in your world, right? And it's hard sometimes to get pulled out of that. Um, the other thing that's fun for him is, um, you know, this is somebody that is born in the year of the pig and pigs, everybody loves the pigs. Everybody loves a pig. They are easygoing, carefree, uh, put on a cozy, oversized sweater, get a hot cup of coffee, and go out for a walk. That's that vibe. And you've got to have a friend because pigs love company. Um, they're very sensual. They're warm-hearted. They can be excessive. Um, and they can be naive and self-indulgent. They surround themselves with everything that's beautiful in the world. And um, everybody has a soft spot for pigs, I would imagine. Except maybe snakes. Oh, yeah. So then when we jump over to what the snake's quality is. So you've got this pig, right? And the pig's quality is very chilled out and very like, Yo, man, what's the vibe? But the snake is very intuitive, very sensual. The snake is the person that walks into the room of a party and takes in the scene. 
What's the vibe? Where do I fit in here? I'm gonna go over here and get a drink first. The pig probably got there early and is sitting off in a chair, just waiting for their friends to just come and find them. <laughs> Cause they don't wanna make a whole lot of effort. And no doubt, no doubt for a pig, somebody is bringing you the drink and bringing you a plate of food, kid you not. And by the end of the party, everybody is around the pig. The snake, and again, we've got two personalities. So where does it blend? And really, this feels like um, someone that just has this very strong intuitive sense, um, is really smart, really enigmatic and unusual and methodical, again, keeping things in order. They can be jealous, they could be calculating, they could be vengeful, and they can be lazy. And you put a lazy snake with a chilled out pig and that's kind of hard to get motivated to do anything. So one is yang fire, one is yang water. One, you know, is sitting in early summer and one is sitting in early winter. So what do you wind up with? A person who is two opposites. Now this can pull, I have seen this in charts, this can pull people apart. Now my chart as an oxen and horse, there is a harm there. And so I do find internal struggle with myself. And I recognize as an astrologer that that is part of my medicine. It's part of why I'm here. And it's one of the reasons that I have been a lifelong journaler. And meditation is a major part of my life because I am aware that reconciling the duality in, that's going on in my mind is a continuum. And there may not ever be a reconciliation between the horse and the ox in my chart, but it is something that I am aware of and I am sensitive to for my own sake. If that makes sense. So you do see this sometimes. You see the tug of war with someone with themselves. Um, and so with these two opposing elements, this one in particular is interesting because what does fire and water do? It boils because fire, remember, right? We've talked about this, that we're in period nine, which is fire. Fire is the one element that really requires the other elements to be a part of the story in order for it to do its thing. Um, so in this, it feels a lot like alchemy. This is the coming to the coming together of opposites to create alchemy to create something very much like cooking, like a pot of water on a flame, right? Very interesting kind of combination there. All right, now I wanna now jump over to um, his luck cycles, because this is where things get very interesting. And I'm telling you, by the time we get to the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you the shocking, like, whoa, point that he's in his life right now. So, Dan Levy, um, we're coming into his first luck cycle. He's an infant, which is really sad to me. I don't like seeing that because it means that that an, an energetic umbilical cord with your mom has been severed, right? Now he's born in 1983. He's three years old when Sarah, his sister's born, 
but there's something, maybe he was sick, maybe his mother had to had something going on, maybe there was something big going on with the family. But usually our first luck cycle, which is determined by your birth year, um, suggests something really dramatic happening in the dynamic of the mother and the child, the mother, the child, or the collective family. Now, this was an interesting time because this is a yin earth sheep that brings in, whoa, a big fireball of energy, which is awesome because of the five elements, fire is what nourishes his yin earth self. And that's balanced at about 15%. His earthy self is also balanced at about 18%. His metal is so strong. It's like 45%. There's so much focus on his output and creativity. Then you look at his water, which is strong. It's like 27%, but there's hardly any wood. No wood, like 2 3%. It's like hardly mentionable. So what we're looking at for success, longevity, and power in your career is to have a strong ruler element and resource element. That's what, what the element would be wood and fire. But because wood is so weak, we need water with the wood. So we want to see that as we progress along and he gets to be an adult where is the where are those elements showing up for him and do they coincide with what's happening and we're going to find out in a moment so this first luck cycle is double yin earth and this is dan levy as an infant <laughs> as an infant here i am this is me This is me. And yes, please surround me with great friends because I love to be around my friends. This was somebody that came into his life with a sense of self, a sense of self-awareness, um, somebody who is independent, knows, his, knows himself well enough to make clear decisions right off the bat. Yes, no, this, that. I'm here and I can just imagine little Dan Levy running around being just a little grown up. So then what we find is that underneath the yin earth of the sheep, there's mention of education, of course, because this is the first luck cycle is taking him to age nine. So he's in school. And it's also bringing in a tiny bit of wood. And that little bit of wood is telling me that going into school might have been going into a battlefield for this little dude. This can be really cruel teachers. It can also be the bully on the playground. Now, the next luck cycle, we've got 10 to ages, 10 to 19, and Lydia Dan Levy is now in a Yang Earth horse period. So it's very hot and dry right now in his chart. And what we're finding here is all of a sudden, this person that for the first 10 years of their lives was very, here I am, and I know myself, suddenly everything is in question. Who am I now? What's going on? And a strained, possibly strained relationship with his father and a big focus on school. And he's making some new friends. This could have been the time when his identity, um, his sexual identity, was also part of this self-exploration. And, you know, for many of us, we can look back over our lives and say that there were times that we felt lost, that there were times that we got involved with people that were looking back now going, why? You know, um, and certainly the ages of 10 to 19 is a walkthrough 
an identity crisis for most teenagers. So now we come to MTV Canada. We've got a career starting that's in 2006, and this luck cycle started 2004. This was Yin Fire Snake, big ball of fire coming in for this guy. Big focus on education, learning, um, signing contracts. His mom starts to play a bigger role. And there's some rebellion. This is like his time to kind of kick things out. And he still is trying to figure out under the surface of things who he is. And so he's playing some different roles, putting on different hats, like being a DJ on MTV. Um, and with all of that, he is using his creative genius to, to create things that are unique and different. So we then get to 2014 and we're rolling into this decade that is talking about two big things, um, at least that he was involved in, certainly Schitt's Creek. And then more recently, um, a movie called Good Grief, which I thought was a documentary. More on that later in a minute. So this period and remembering the elements needed, that period was Yang Fire Dragon. And the dragon is damp, fertile earth. It's the earth of spring. It is exactly the kind of energy that he needs. Now, we don't have strong wood, but it shows up in the years, right? Um, so, like, if we went back and we kind of checked in on what were the years that some of these things happened, it might make a little more sense. But suffice it to say, we're very focused on what's supporting him and himself, and his audience. Also remembering that his career itself, okay, and I mentioned this just a minute ago, the fact that he wrote, directed, produced, did a lot of the parts of Schitt's Creek, that is the wood element. He supplanted it through his actions. And I've done videos before about how the five elements is everything. It's colors, it's parts of the body, it's corners of our homes according to the Bagua and Feng Shui. It is everything. We are the five elements. Even if we're missing an element, we are made of nature, <laughs> living in boxes wearing rubber shoes. We are so disconnected from our innate self. And yet, there it is. This period of his life focused a lot on his mom, but it's, um, and also his, his dad. It's very interesting this time, 2014, until this year. Yeah, you see it, we're getting there. <laughs> this big thing I was leading up to. Um, that this was a signature time for him to play a role and to challenge himself in his career and to start making money through that. And it's so interesting that his dad is also mentioned in this because Eugene Levy played, you know, a main, a main role in Schitt's Creek. Now, in the other, the ending of this luck cycle, we get to this movie that I thought was a documentary at first, I think because I was talking to my older brother, my older brother, um, I always as a kid looked up to him because he loves celebrity. He loves celebrity and he loves movies and all that, the glitter and glow. And I always thought that my brother would have made a, my older brother would have made a great movie critic. So we had this little kind of debate about good grief because he didn't like it. 
And I ultimately did like it because I thought that it did have an overarching, beautiful message about what happens when we lose somebody close to us and what that, how that impacts our lives. So this feels to me like such an amazing launch. This decade, 2014 to 2024, when he is in his 30s, was so much about him finding himself in his work and being rewarded for it. I mean, he's won awards. Many of the actors um, and actresses involved in Schitt's Creek won awards. I remember that Schitt's Creek was what I used as my Prozac when uh, 2019, when I was going through a really big breakup and was very depressed. Laughter, my friends, can be amazing medicine. And then at the same time, Good Grief was um, a film that so was tender to my heart because like many people, in the last few years, I've lost a lot of loved ones and I've also lost a lot of big, big things. Things that were so big that they were a huge part of my life, right? And I am someone that lives with grief. It is not curable. It does not go away. Now, a breakup with a romance yeah, over time, we probably move on and probably should, right? But losses of loved ones, people that have died, you're never going to see again. Um, that is a whole nother thing. And in fact, I'm doing a grief retreat here at my home in July, and I can put the link in the description if you're interested. I also am a grief ceremonialist, interesting enough, right? Um, because I feel like there are so many people that are dealing with and trying, as I did, trying to push through, um, living with a broken heart and, um, that nearly broke me, that nearly broke me. I wound up Last fall, in six weeks of wintering, completely checked out of my life, and I have radically changed my life since last August because I had to honor the grief and my broken heart. And I'm so glad I did that because now I offer uh, retreats here at my home to people who are also grieving Um or lost, or questioning. It's being hard. being human is hard. It's hard stuff. Where's Dan Levy now? As of January 2024, my friend Dan Levy has moved into a luck cycle of a yin wood rabbit. This is double yin wood. This is also creating with his little piggy self, a semi-wood trio, a lot of wood. All of a sudden, spotlight is on his career, like never before. And this is not the only luck cycle. The one following is gonna be even richer. Oh my God, 2034 to 2044 for Dan Levy is going to be a moving, shaking thing. And it almost, I don't know, I don't want to say needs to be, but it's almost like the time that he's in now is just so rich. And it's interesting because it's so focused on his career. There's no mention of anything else. No mention of romance, no mention of family, no mention of money. It's just his work. And it is challenging work. It is shifting, changing, challenging work. Not easy. This isn't 
This, when I see things like this, this doesn't speak to me of something that's going to be like, oh, I go to the job and it's going to be this and I know what I do. This is challenging work. This is where he gets into projects that are going to really demand a lot from him. And I also think he's going to do more writing. Um, so what makes this so is this is his life pillar. Dan Levy is right now walking 10 years of seeing his life. It is a, it could, you can think of it like a life review or it's like the cliff notes of all that your life is. And what is your life? It is about the work that you do. And that you can say leaving a legacy for sure. And Schitt's Creek broke barriers about the LGBTQ community, about acceptance, about racial uh, relations. So many really deep, rich topics. And I think that's part of his signature of being here. This guy is a genius at what he does. He intuitively, innately knows. Just saying. And yet, he is going to be challenged because we all come here to learn something. He's going to be bullied. And he's going to get bad press. He's going to get, he'll have his flops. but he will always continue to fight the good fight and create what he feels in his heart is a story worth telling. Pretty neat, huh? One of the things that is in his chart, just to mention, is in the combination of his four pillars, his horse and his snake form a semi-fire trio. That is beneficial. It's kind of like it's surging in support. At the same time, his monkey and his pig harm metal, which is also good because it's kind of saying to all that 40-some percent metal dominating his chart, chill out a little bit. And that's also a good thing. It's also a good thing that in his luck cycles, he doesn't come into a time when there is metal because that would not be a good thing. We don't want to tip a chart that's out of balance further out of balance. Um, so all of this to say about Dan Levy and I champion his amazing work. And I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. And until next time, be well.